Hi guys, it's Tom from CoJoint here, and in this video I'm going to give you a long overdue look at the Action and Orbit editors for Unity. So if any of you guys have been following my progress over the last year, you know what I've been working on. It's character development software and a machine learning tool which builds upon the, the character development side of things. Um, but just this morning I finished off tweaking Orbit, which is the uh, machine learning tools. Action's been ready for some time, so um, we're really at the uh, penultimate stages of development here. So I thought it would be a good chance to show you exactly how they work with Unity. Uh, the first thing I'll point out is that uh, they uh, both pieces of software work on Unity Pro and Unity Free, which is what I'm using for this demo. Um, it also works for 32-bit and 64-bit systems. There's no Mac version of this, this is for Windows only at the moment, but um, if there's enough demand I will start working on that um, as soon as I've released. Um, this is going to be a very, very quick tour since I'd like to keep my videos fairly short. Um, so I hope that it's not too confusing. If you have any questions about how things work, then please fire them my way. So, as you guys might know, um, the way that the software works is that you need to build a, a, uh, a network of skills using action, and then you can perform machine learning on that, that um, network of skills using Orbit. So the first thing I'm going to do now very quickly is create a, um, a network using action. So to do that, you have to click on the Create button here in the Project View, or you can go up on the uh, the toolbar up there and you click Action Skill Library. So a skill library is a place for you to store several action networks. So for example, your game, you might have several networks that you want to use in your project. A skill library encapsulates each of those networks. So let's just keep uh, stick to the default name here, create a new skill library, and then three panes will open up here. This is we're using Orbit right now, so uh, it's free. If you just have action installed then it will be just two, the network editor and the library explorer. So for now let's focus on the network editor. Uh, one thing I'd like to note as well is things look a lot better in Unity Pro. So if you do have Pro um, I think it looks a lot more uh, sleek and um, attractive than it does in the uh, the free version but that's that's the way things are at the moment. Anyway so um, in the library explorer um, this is where you can um, look at the hierarchy of your libraries and networks and the skills inside those networks. So first of all we want to do is in our skill library called my new skill library we want to add, press add here and we can add a new network to the library. So let's just stick to the default names and what's happened in the network editor here is it's picked up that this library that we're using has just um, had a network added to it and um, we're now able to edit that network. So making sure we have that network highlighted let's uh, focus the network editor where we're actually going to create the network. So networks contain skills, that's the things that our characters and our games will actually develop and improve upon as we play the game. So the first thing we need to do is create a new skill. So I'm going to call this strength and uh, these parameters are explained in the manual but for the moment I'm just going to stick some arbitrary numbers in here, these have absolutely no meaning because we won't be needing them. And uh, let's create another skill called speed. Don't worry about these numbers. Um, if you're interested in what these numbers mean, feel free to send me an email or uh, leave a comment. Um, they are explained in the manual, so uh, don't worry about things until then. Okay, so we have three skills here, uh, which are represented by these little boxes. Uh, we can edit these skills on the inspector panel on the right-hand side here. We can change the names if you wanted to, so I could call this stealth, for example, and you see it updates automatically in the editor. Uh, let's change it back to speed. And now the spe the thing that makes software um, code joint action um, unique is the way that we can connect skills together. So if you're playing a game, uh, games at the moment, there's usually uh, no relationship between skills whatsoever. They are considered independent. Um, if you want more information about this, check my previous videos. Action allows you to model relationships between skills. So for example, strength and speed are connected. So let's create a connection between those skills. And we do so using the button up in the top right hand corner there. These numbers here represent the strength of the relationship and uh, in the user guide I actually explain exactly how to define these numbers um, for the network as you want it to be uh, uh, as, you, as you want it to suit your game or whatever you're uh, using the network for but for the moment let's just keep it to the default values. Now you can see that a bar has joined these two skills together to show that they're connected in the network. And equally, I can select these two skills or 
sorry, I missed them out there, but that shows me a new thing. Um, I just clicked on speed, I then pressed the button up here, and this allows me to connect two skills together. So here we are, but for, for this demo, I'm actually not going to connect these skills together. So what I can do to delete a connection is um, if I just change these numbers here to zero on the inspector, you see that that deleted the connection there. So when I highlight two skills that are connected, it shows me in the inspector the connection between those. If I want to delete the connection, I can just set those parameters to uh, zero both ways. If I only want it a one-way connection, I can change one of the numbers to zero and leave the other number as non-zero. And you can see that that makes the connection a one-way, um, a sort of one-way traffic between those two skills. Uh, I'm sorry that this is too quick, but I really want to just get through to the details and show you just the editor in action. So this is our extremely, extremely network that we've created, a uh, simple network that we've created here. Um, now let's assume that this is exactly how we want it to be kept for our game. If we were to just use action, if we don't have orbit installed, now what we can do is we go to action, ignore all these scripts, they will be compiled down into a DLL in the final version. We can go to our skill library and we can press in the inspector here the generate runtime library from asset button there. And what that does is it compiles all this information about our network into a, a namespace or an assembly that you can actually use in code. And in a separate video, I'll show you exactly how to do that. But for now, I want to keep on rushing through this and uh, move straight onto Orbit. So this is our network. Um, there's so many more features of the, um, of the editor that I'd like to show you, but no time. Let's go straight into training this, um, the computer to understand how to process information about this network. And we do that with the Orbit Trainer. So with this network selected at the moment, we highlight the Orbit Trainer tab, and we notice that this network is completely untrained. Now, what this training process does, which I haven't really described, but I'll try and explain it as simply as possible, is this will teach the computer what different skill levels mean and what that means, how that should change the game itself. And uh, it's easier to show you this if I just start training it. So this button up here is the start or restart button for the training of the current network. And training will basically classify training examples for your skills. So as you play a, name, a game, sorry, your skill levels will progress, they'll get stronger, you'll get better. And depending on how you play, different skills will have different strength levels. And you could say that those strength level, sorry, different abilities, different skill levels, not strength levels, sorry. And those skill levels um, represent how you're playing the game. And you could probably classify different players into different sort of classes depending on their skill levels. And this is exactly what the training process here does. It allows you to classify um, training levels of, uh, sorry, skill levels of a player playing a game using a particular action network. So to begin training, we need to set up classifications. So for this particular example, I'm going to set up four classifications and they're going to be called uh, Terminator. Um, that might get me into copyright problems, but who cares? Terminator, um, let's call him a, I don't know, for, uh, uh, Assassin, so a speedy character. Probably, it might be double S, yeah, Assassin. And then we'll call him a Spy, a guy who has high dexterity. And then a Hybrid. So a hybrid is just going to be anything between any one of these. We're not going to make any more classifications than that. So a Terminator, for our purposes here, we're just going to say someone who has high skill level. Assassin, anyone who has high speed. Spy, anyone who has high dexterity or relatively high of any of those. And a hybrid is anywhere in between. So now we press the Accept button, and now we can begin training. Now, what we've presented with here is uh, a, a training example of what a character's skill levels could be at some point in the game. And what we need to do now in the console here, the, the actual console in the Orbit Trainer, we need to provide a classification for this training example. So we need to say which one of these classifications this skill example falls into. So for this training example, we've got high speed, we've got high dexterity. So I'm going to say that's a hybrid. So what I do here is I type in four in the console, I press return. And you see in the inspector up here that that training example, which I can click here to go back and view again, has been classified as a hybrid. This then generates a new training example, which we need to classify again. Now, uh, this training example has a much higher speed than strength or dexterity. 
So I'm going to give this a 2 because that was the assassin classification. And here we go, um, here we have a, another hybrid because it has high strength, high dexterity. Now the next thing I'd like to point out is up in the top right hand corner we have a classification presented here which is what the computer currently thinks this training example should be classified by. And in this case it's got it right, it sees that it's a hybrid. So um, there's, there's, it, there's some mathematics behind this but we don't actually really need to classify this example uh, or give this example a classification when it gets it right. It's not an important example, it already knows what it is. And in this case we basically can say okay we don't need to store this example it won't give us anything new. And so we need to generate a new example i.e. rejecting this current one. And to do that with the trainer you just press R and then press enter again. So you notice up here no new uh, training example has been added to the inspector but a, a new one has been generated. And we see here that this one is being classified as 4, but I'm going to call this a 3, i.e. a spy, because its dexterity is higher than the other ones. So we call that a 3. So the way I recommend that you train a uh, orbit to uh, classify a network or to understand how to predict the classification of a network is that whenever it gets it right already, um, you reject the example. If it gets it wrong, i.e. it needs to be taught actually how to classify this, then that's when you actually give this training example a classification and don't reject. So again in this example it's got it wrong, it thinks it's a 4 when in fact it's a 3 because it has high dexterity, or it's a spy. And so we give it a classification, uh, again it's got this one wrong but if it were to get it right we'd reject and then we'd get another example until um, it, it gets it wrong and it needs to be taught how to, uh, to classify that one correctly. And this training process will continue until you personally are satisfied that the training process is complete, i.e. to a particular accuracy, um, you, you're happy with the level of classification, i.e. the accuracy of classification. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead to that point for this network, and uh, then we'll see how we proceed from there with this, uh, with this current training process. Okay, so we're back about 15 minutes later, and um, I've generated... Uh, 77 training examples which I've actually classified and haven't rejected um, and I think I'm getting pretty good um, correlation between the predictions and what I uh, think the actual classification should be um, so let's just go through a couple more examples just to demonstrate that so it's given it a 4 because the strength and the speed are both high so I can reject that example because it's got it correct here it's the speed to the highest so it's given it a 2 reject here it's sort of across the board about the same so again a 4 reject and speeds higher it's a 2 so I carry on doing this uh, process until really I'm, I'm really happy with the level of classification accuracy that I'm getting I think usually with examples with this um, many classifications and this many um, skills are you free skills for classifications I think about 100 examples should should do it uh, so I'm a little bit light for, uh, for uh, this particular example but um, I think we're about ready to proceed just for the uh, purposes of this video. So once you're happy with all these training examples, it's time to actually test the accuracy um, and also improve the accuracy of the classification using some, um, some mathematical methods. So to start the testing process in the console, we type test. And you'll see in the console there it says training complete, testing mode enabled. And what's happened here is that in the testing example, um, underneath the training examples column here, we've now got testing examples um, area in the inspector as well. So for the testing examples we don't actually give a predicted classification we're just going through 50 examples that um, we don't which you don't necessarily have to really reject because they're just any old examples, any old skill levels and we give them what we think our classification is and then the model is going to take that information and produce an accuracy. So um, let's go through now and classify 50 examples and um, we then take a look at the accuracy that we get from our predictions. Right, so we've now generated 50 testing examples. And in the console, you'll see that uh, we've got a couple of messages here. One, which the first one says training and testing complete. And then we've got the model prediction accuracy. So this is the classification rate that it got correct, or the, uh, the rate of correct classification for those 50 testing examples and you can see that in this very quick job that I've done here with not that many training examples you know only we only used um, 76 training examples we get an accuracy of 76 so that's funny 
76 training examples, 76%. Um, that is a coincidence, by the way. Um, so it's not too bad. I mean, if I'd spent more time in this, we'd certainly get something better. I would suggest for your models that you want to get an accuracy of 85% or uh, probably 80% or higher. But this would still um, this would still produce probably a fairly decent result. Remember as well that this classification is based on how I view the training example as well. So actually, the classification that the the, the orbit might have produced might have actually been more suitable than uh, what I um, that I gave it. Actually, it might have been um, uh, more consistent with the rest of the training. But once we've done this classification process and you're happy with it, then we can start again. Um, sorry, not not start again, but we can start to use this in our actual games. And the process to do this is very simple again. Um, you find your action library in your project. You'll see I'm using Unity 3, by the way, but this does work in Unity 4. Um, and then you just click Generate Runtime Library from Asset. So that's what I'm going to do now. Thought for a while. And what it's done is it's created a uh, assembly here which contains all the information about this network, about the orbit training that we can then go on to use in our games. So uh, that's all for now. Um, next video that I'll do, I'll show you actually about using this uh, assembly that we've created in the editor in our games. Uh, it's very, very simple to use both action and orbit, and um, uh, hopefully you'll see that it will uh, it will fit quite nicely into software that you're making at the moment, perhaps, or a new game that you're working on. So um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've uh, found it interesting, informative. Um, please leave a like or a uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos. If you'd like to see more tutorials, then uh, send me a message. Um, but apart from that, nothing else to say. Thanks very much.